Good morning, traders. I'm Dennis Deck. And I'm Joel Alcana, and welcome to Monday's edition of Pre-Market Info. The bulls are keeping control here, Joel. We're up 925 here on the S&P futures contract. Been as high as 1638, trading at 1636 and a quarter, building on Friday afternoon's rally. Yeah, even um, even a bear like myself uh, was very impressed with the market on Friday. Uh, did open up, had a nice sell-off, got right near the close, and then just came roaring back. Closed right near the high of the day, which was uh, 1630.75. So if we do get a pullback to that 1630 area, should be support. Uh, I don't see any major resistance up to 1649. That's your high from June 19th. Uh, that'd be another 13 handles away from here. It'd be uh, one heck of a rally on the street. The rally's pretty broad based today, too. You've even got gold actually participating in this rally. Woohoo! <laughs> the gold gold contract is, uh, well, the GLD is trading up $1.18 here, actually. Gold futures obviously trading up uh, as well. And the miners, even the miners are all participating. I'm looking at Barrick Gold this morning trading up 25 cents. Uh, Newmont's trading up 34 or 52. Gold Corp's trading up 54. So you've got the gold futures up, and all these miners here are getting a little bit of life this morning. Right. Uh, just looking at that, the, the gold contract uh, sold off hard on Friday, but uh, have recovered. Uh, I'm keeping an eye on this 1260 level. We bumped up to 1257, 1259 a few times, still 30 bucks away from there. So I don't think you'll get any major short covering uh, in the gold until you can break above that 1260 level. And then, of course, uh, you know, you get back down to that 1200, uh, nice round number like that. Uh, People stepping ahead of the prior low of the move at 11.79 and change. Barrick Gold did make new lows on Friday, but Newmont and Gold Corp both held up. Actually, I believe neither of them did make a new. Actually, Newmont did make a new low too. So I guess Gold Corp was the only one that didn't make new lows on the move. If you look at the Barrick, though, we are bouncing, like I said, about 30 cents actually now at 14.05. If you look where this really broke down from again for the second time, it was up in the 14 and a half area, uh, basically on. Uh, Third, or on Wednesday, I guess that was. We closed fairly strong, but then open week on Friday and went straight down from the open. I think he starts getting back up in that mid 14s, though. Sellers may re emerge. Uh, so far, the high in the pre market in that barrack. You always start with the American. You like that stock. It's I like barrack. It's a Canadian <laughs> blood in me there that I got to go and give barrack some love. You, I don't, you, well, you know, you I don't like it as an investment because the thing, dang thing keeps just going straight down, but I like to talk about it. So. You, you, you've liked it all the way since 25 bucks. Yeah, but, well, uh, I, don't, I didn't really, no, I didn't like it as an investor. <laughs> I've been saying all the I wrote the article last week that I thought it was going to single digits. Come on, give me a little bit of a break there. Okay. <laughs> I like talking uh, about it. <laughs> once again, we've been saying this. Uh, we'll just put the repeat button on hold here. Low of the move is 13.43. Uh, we're trading up by uh, 60 cents for that level. So if you're trying to pick a bottom in the gold market, you have a reference point at uh, 13.43. Uh, struggling at the 14.10 level in the pre-market. Uh, next level after that would uh, be the high on Friday at 14.30. So. Pretty simple numbers to look at there in the bear cold. Bounce over to the crude contract. We'll check out what crude is doing here this morning. I believe it touched up to that 104 area. Uh, pulled back a little bit here, but we got as high as 104.12. We're at 102.67 right now in the crude this morning. So pulling back a bit, but still uh, crude's had a pretty good resiliency here in the last month. Been slowly climbing. Yeah, I think it's uh, all that turmoil uh, going on in, uh, you know, overseas, Saudi Arabia and whatnot has uh, people worried about the supply. Uh, not much to look at on the daily chart except, you know, you got up to a nice uh, round number like uh, 104, 104.12, probably blew out some shorts that were trying to pick a top on Friday, uh, coming back, you know, on the downside. Uh, you just have to look at this, uh, you know, Friday's low, which is quite a ways away from here, uh, down in just over 100. Keep an eye on that. But uh, the crew just not not really seeming to give in at all here. Um, actually, uh, the low on Friday was 100.71. So 
if you are out there in shorts and got an appetite uh, for holding on, that's uh, your next major support point. Let's go on to the individual equities. Actually, Dell in the news quite a bit on Friday and over the weekend here. Um, I think concerns on Friday over the merger possibly uh, not going through here or not uh, the shareholders not voting for it. Uh, basically knocked the price down as low as 12.70. So here's the stock. Obviously, this has been tra- trading on the acquisition price, which is up at 13.65. Just been s- trading slightly below it, but really got killed Friday. It is bouncing back today. The ISS is recommending to shareholders that they vote for the proposed sale of Dell at 13.65 in cash. And then there was an article in Barron's too, saying that Icon with him on board and everything that you know they could take a bit up to uh, $15 to win shareholder approval here. So it's a couple of pieces of good news basically for the Dell here this morning, and it is trading up back up 33 cents here. This is like the most boring takeover merger <laughs> I've like, like, like ever. I mean, you know, it's just uh, Icon is, is not moving the issue uh, at all. Um, dropped under the $13 level. I just think Michael Dell is just trying to dump this thing, and uh, I mean, this might be one of the battles Icon's not, not going to win. Yeah, well, that's just it. Icon pr- tries to push his muscle into everything. Seems like he always has a piece into everything anyways. Trying to push around, trying to obviously get a little bit more money for himself and I guess for shareholders. But I don't know. I think this could go through at 1365. It's always hard to say, but eventually Dell's probably going to be gone. Uh, but who knows where that price is actually going to be out. But, you know, concerns on Friday is what knocked it down. Obviously not as concerned here this morning. And the price has bounced back. We will, uh, let's go into the upgrades and downgrades because there's no real individual earnings. Alcoa will be tonight, which we'll get to in a second. But uh, we do have some downgrades, some significant ones here too this morning. We've got actually Intel, INTC, getting downgraded at Evercore Partners. And it is actually trading down 16 cents right now. Obviously, the SPUs are up 9, so Intel relative strength is going to be weak off of that downgrade. Uh, Intel's just uh, been kind of quiet here since uh, hitting the 2550 level uh, a few trading sessions ago, a couple weeks ago. Uh, what I'd be keeping an eye on to see if this uh, downgrade um, carries any weight, just under the 2350 level. Yep. Uh, you've had a couple bottoms there, so not I can't really say that the stock is really in any kind of trouble until you break into the 2350. And then on the upside, um, you have a nice top up here, uh, double top, just below the 2450 level uh, from the end of last week and uh, on Monday. So uh, rally mode, I'd keep an eye on that 2450 level um, on a decline, 2350. Uh, it seems to be good support. I wonder if this is one of those downgrades that the investors might come in to fade because he did have the potential double bottom there that you just pointed out in the whole 2345 area. And we have bounced off of there. We bounced out of there the last couple of days. It's pulling back here, so I wonder if this downgrade is giving the, a chance for investors to maybe scoop some stock up uh, if it does continue the rally. Uh, a couple other ones downgraded deer di- getting downgraded at Piper Jaffrey here. It's actually trading up a nickel, so not knocking it really down here, uh, which is interesting. Um, usually you see these downgrades will knock the stock down, but I guess we are up nine points. It's bit up at 81.51 right now, so uh, deer looking, um, well, actually not looking that weak. Yeah, but I mean, just overall, I mean, we've been talking about these, uh, you know, these stocks for a while, and you know, considering that the S and P's are what ninety points yeah. off their, you know, the low of the move at uh, fifteen fifty three yeah. and change, and what's how much is uh, how much is uh, deer off the yeah, the very low close the move to off. its lows. Yeah, seventy nine, yeah, seventy nine fifty. This is probably like uh, if you're an active day trader and you're you know trying to you know trade stocks and stuff. When the market's taken off, man, it just doesn't seem like this one's the one you know one to be in. Uh, had a couple tops here around the eighty-two dollar level. Eighty-one, eighty-four was a high on Friday, and then a couple highs just above eighty-two. Um, earlier in the week, so uh, that's a resistance point uh, to keep an eye on. Um, on the downside, you do have uh, three juicy lows here uh, between 80.51 and 80.57. So if that doesn't hold uh, up on the news here, uh, we could be sliding down to the 80 and then uh, back into the 79 handle. Looks like Priceline's making a new all-time high here again this morning, PCLN. They're getting upgraded at Morgan Stanley today. Stock is trading up $16 at 871.30. So 
big run up oh. here for Priceline, breaking through that key resistance, uh, which we were looking around at where it closed at 855. Uh, so this is breaking out. New all-time highs there, Joel. Have you ever uh, bought anything on Priceline? I haven't, no, actually. I have friends, though, that go on there, and they say they get great deals on stuff. So I do have some of my buddies that are big believers in Priceline. I've never been a big fan of it. I don't know. I've never maybe just given it the shot. So maybe we're too old for stuff like that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Priceline. I don't know about that. The young uh, whippersnappers, look, they're all over stuff like this as price line on. You can, on any type of the deal. Only like. I, the only thing I could, uh, we only have one relevant point here. We're looking at the uh, interday, or the uh, pre-market chart here. Hit 872.78. Uh, you know, that's a buck fifty away from here. Maybe a couple orders at 873, but uh, that's, a, that's yeah. something to keep an eye on. Uh, in this issue, uh, all-time highs. I mean, you can't really argue with that. Uh, just looking at the chart from here, from the interday activity, you know, if you're playing this long off the open or you're trying to want to lock in some gains from this uh, this upgrade here, uh, 870, I mean, I, I think if I was playing it and I got 16 points on this overnight and it dipped below uh, 870, uh, <laughs> not much under there, that is the late 60 right yeah but it's hard to fade stocks when they're making new all-time highs i always see traders and especially newer traders that are just starting they see the stocks making highs and they obviously want and they want to come in uh it's just human tendency to fade those moves and it typically doesn't work it typically is more of a when the stocks are breaking out making new all-time highs it's usually pullbacks are getting bought you get shorts that are underwater there's so many other reasons you know to be buying stocks when are making new all-time highs you can look at these things fundamentally sometimes especially when you look like a tesla which we'll talk about in a second um and you say well fundamentally this makes no sense at all but technically it does technically and technicals matter um definitely in this whole high frequency trading world technicals probably matter more than they ever did and with priceline making new all-time highs i don't want to be short it yeah dennis though i i, I didn't say that you're know, <laughs> shorting this thing okay what okay. you know what you know which is always tough to do i just saying if you you know along this issue you know let's say you, you know you took it home overnight you know as a day trade or you know a swing trade here and you want to let it run, fine. But I, the perspective I was giving on it is, you know, it's up almost 17 bucks in the pre-market. If it doesn't blast through that 872, 78 high, falls below 870, you know, it might be a reason to cut bait. Let's go to Tesla here. It is making new <laughs> all-time highs to 121.98. Stock trading up another two dollars here. Nothing stops <laughs> Tesla. This thing has just been an absolute monster this year. It's got to be. It's got to be up the most on the on the exchange. You'd think. And back in March, this thing was like 35 bucks. It's 120 dollars now. This has just been an incredible, incredible move for Tesla. Well, I mean, I, I think uh, people are banking on them selling more than a couple thousand cars a, so. a month or whatever. But uh, 122.74. Uh, that's your reference point on the upside. Uh, we hit that. Uh, just a little bit ago so if you're trying to if you're trying to pick a top here or exit along uh, 122.74 uh, has been the high in the pre-market uh, looking at the daily chart here another gap up you really don't don't have that much you only got two bucks uh, to fill the gap down to 120.28 uh, the high from uh, Friday so if you're playing it uh, short here at any point during the day yeah, keep an eye on that at 120.28 is close was right up there too at 120.09. You got UNH breaking out to looks like seven or eight year highs. I'm not sure if that's all time highs here too, but it's trading up almost a dollar here right now. Positive mention in Barron's is what's really the driver here. 67.07 is where it's trading right now, so it's up another 90 cents and uh, it's just been on a tear too. All these, you know, just quietly, this whole sector has probably been one of the strongest, this whole uh, health insurer sector, because all of these health insurance stocks are all sitting at or near all time highs. And UNH breaking out here this morning. Uh, yeah, that the the uh, the kind of the gist of the Barron's article uh, was that they, you know now with Obamacare they're going to be able to. Uh, their one company is situated to focus on profit margins uh, versus market share. They already have the market share. They just got to figure out how to wiggle the most money out of the, you know, out of the medical insurance agencies here. So getting a boost, uh, 67.10 is really the only uh, trade that you have in here. Uh, looking at uh, the monthlies here, 
to find uh, some resistance. I believe this is an all-time high. If you go back to 2005, this stock did trade above 66. Um, if you're trading this uh, from a daily perspective here, uh, close right near the high. 66.19 was the high. 66.17 was the close. So should find some good support in the lower 66 handle. Uh, let's look at a couple other ones. Um, Alcoa is going to report earnings here tonight. It's, it's trading up a nickel ahead of that. They always say, "Oh, look to Alcoa to see what the you know to get an indicator of how this earnings season is going to be." You always laugh that off because Alcoa here, every time we look at it, it just seems to be lower. Seven dollars and seventy-one cents is uh, where it got down to actually on Friday. Uh, actually, it got lower than that. It, it got uh, seven sixty-three, I guess, on about well, that was Thursdays. But regardless, stock closed 781. Uh, if you look at it from the last month, it's basically been straight down here. It hasn't really bounced at all. So I guess we're getting a little run up in earnings, if you can call it that, this whole 20 cents. But I don't know. What do you think of Alcoa? Uh, <laughs> I think Klaus Kleinfeld is going to come on and tell us how everything is going so well at their company <laughs> and uh, how things are going great as the stock continues to, uh, to go down. Uh What's interesting, this stock, it did get a downgrade last week. I think it was from J.P. Morgan uh, and that downgrade. I remember it trading like around 753, 754 yeah, in yeah, the free market. Yeah. Never got there. Never got there during the regular session. So 763, 766, double bottom from Wednesday and Friday. Those have been uh, your lows for the move, keeping an eye on that. Um, we are trading above uh, Friday's high here, which is uh, big for uh, for this issue. Probably... Uh, you know, get a little momentum, a little short covering in the earnings, maybe migrate uh, back up towards that. Uh, you actually got a double. You have three tops between 787 and 791, so you do have um, alcohol opening into resistance. We'll have to see what happens with the earnings. All I think scary is if you are shorting issues like this. I mean, it's the perennial disappointer. So obviously, if they do anything that's you know even you know ha okay. You know, the stock could rally off of that. So we'll have to see after the bell what this Alcoa is saying. Let's go on to Apple and Google. Apple actually performing pretty good here over the course. It held up actually quite well on uh, the last couple of days when the market uh, did get beat up. But then, you know, obviously the market bounced back. And But it's just hanging out here, this whole 420 area. We're at 418.95 this morning. It seems like it's just pausing and resting. And this is sometimes what Apple will do when it comes up to a key number like, you know, an old resistance number of 420. Take a few days, digest the move, and then eventually maybe it takes it out. What are you thinking? Um, well, first thing we got to be aware of now is Friday, or excuse me, Wednesdays and Fridays highs uh, within um, uh, 32 cents, 33 cents of each other. That 422.98 uh, was a high on Wednesday. Only got the 423.29 on uh, on Friday. So uh, not even sniffing that in the pre-market, considering you know the strength in the S&Ps. Just a little surprise this thing can't break above 423.29. Um, if you do get above that level, um, on the way to 430, you got a minor stopping point at uh, 425.98. That was the uh, that was the 11 day high, and then uh, coming back on the downside, uh, two lows, uh, 1535 from uh, Friday and 1745 from Wednesday. You split that, call it 1650. I'd be looking uh, is that as a as a potential short cover or low risk long. Um, in the pre-market, then, if someone's sticking their neck out here just above uh, the 420 level. You sniffed it once at 420 and a quarter, got up there to 420 again, but uh, that seems to be resistance in the pre-market. Flipping over to Google here, it's up about three and a half bucks this morning, trading 8.9708. Sneaky rally here for Google. Really, over the course of the last six, seven days, it's just been a slightly higher highs, slightly higher lows, slowly sniffing up to that key psychological level of 900. Do we take it out today? Ah, uh, with the momentum you got going in the market here, I would not be surprised. Uh, we are trading to Friday's high, as with the rest of the market, 895.41. Uh, uh, last time, uh, started to rally up towards the $900 level. Um, you had a you had a, a one high at 901, and then uh, you know, it, then the next day it busted out to 910.84. I because I remember that day because I was. Uh, I was long some weekly puts on that. That wasn't that wasn't a pleasurable experience. But uh, psychological nine hundred dollar level nine oh one was the high from June twentieth, and then 
things really open up uh, from after that level. Uh, looking at the uh, pre-market trading here, 898.85 has been the high. So there's your first minor resistance point. Just slipping over to AT&T and Verizon quickly before we end. They're both ex-dividend today. We talked about it on Friday. They are ex-dividend today. AT&T going ex-dividend for $0.45. Cents. The adjusted close is 50.78. Verizon, or I'm sorry, Verizon uh, going ex-dividend for $0.51. Cents. The adjusted close is 50.78. Uh, AT&T's adjusted close 35.38. Um, uh -huh. And it's trading up about twenty cents here um, after the ex-dividend date. But we know sometimes those guys come in after it goes ex-dividend. They come sometimes they come with their selling shoes on. Sometimes they don't. But well, what's your take? Uh, well, it, look at the accumulation from uh, last week, and you know as far as people you know buying the stock ahead of uh, the dividend, uh, they were targeting that lower thirty-five handle, uh, thirty-five fifteen to thirty-five and a quarter. Um, encompassed all the lows from last week. Uh, so I was still, even with the X dividend and the adjustments and stuff, I'm still looking at 35.20 um, as major support level. Um, coming back um, on the upside, uh, you did have a couple highs uh, under 36, 35.74, 35.80, 35.90. Uh, and plus, if you know, if we do rally back up to that area, uh, the traders that did take it home short term for a dividend. Uh, will be making a nice profit on the stock uh, as well as the dividend that they took home. Uh, you know, longer term, you really need to bust above uh, 36 uh, in order to consider this in a breakout mode. Market just kind of hanging out. It looks like it's going to be maybe a quiet uh, pre-market session here because we're still up at 1636. That's the exact spot we started the show 20 minutes ago. Uh, trading up nine points here. So we've had a good overnight rally, but just hanging out here for the majority of the pre-market session. Uh, the stock's obviously going to open a bit higher here. We'll have to see if this uh, rally can hold up and if we can continue up to Joel's resistance level he was talking about. And the <laughs> yeah, 16, I, that's a little far away, eh? The 1649 level? Yeah, I mean, you know, you, sometimes you hear Kramer talk about, ah, these up opens, you know, these up opens are tough to trade. And, yeah. you know, look at, look at Friday. Friday had that big up open. Yeah, and, they uh, faded you know, the it. Spoos gave, gave back 20 handles and then, uh, you know, and then rallied back. Uh, when up. Uh, Getting these kind of uh, moves in the pre-market, uh, the really thing that I like to look at is you know mid-range on the day. We've had a uh, a 12-point rally, cut that in half, six points. So I'm looking at uh, you know the 16.32 level to hold. Um, also, you have a Friday's high at 16.30.75. So I think as as long as those levels uh, remain intact here, uh, we should be able to uh, challenge uh, that that 16.38 high and. Uh, sneak into the 1640 handle. That's our show for today, guys. Have a great trading session, and we'll be back at you tomorrow morning.